Well, welcome everyone. We're going to talk to you today about some recently released uh, security packs. So this is available both on our pack dispensary, where you can just come go to packs.cribble.io, go over here, download it. Um, version 3.4 or greater, you can just go add new from within Cribble once you're in the processing packs section. You can do add from dispensary and you can select the one pack you wanna install here and immediately get it installed just by clicking on install. It's great, great out here because I already have this one installed. First thing we always wanna do when we're looking at any pack, so if we go ahead and open this up locally here, is always go look at the readme. The readme is under settings. And in this case here, we have a diagram that explains or lays out everything that's happening within this pack, as well as uh, just general instructions and why this pack exists and what, what you can benefit uh, by leveraging this pack. In particular, there's a lot of unwanted events that, because CrowdStrike is very chatty, so why not drop those? Uh, a lot of other events that also have just a lot of fields that you're never going to search or report on. So let's remove those fields. And then in many cases, just because of the sheer volume of, of logs that are similar to VPC flow logs or NetFlow, why not aggregate those? So this is exactly what we're doing here with this pack. And the CrowdStrike pack also has some additional uh, capabilities to help do some enrichment. And it, it all stems with the way CrowdStrike sends or makes their logs available. And by the way, this integration, this pack was primarily written for CrowdStrike FDR. That's where they will post all of their logs for your in instance there uh, to an S3 bucket. And then you will have access to that S3 bucket. They'll give you access to that S3 bucket to read all of the logs that are written to there. And then you can have Cribble process them and send them on to Splunk, send them on to Elastic, Exabeam, or a destination of your choice. Or potentially another S3 bucket as well that you own and control as the customer versus the one that CrowdStrike gave you because that one only will keep the logs in there for seven days. And because of Cribble's share nothing architecture, we have to put the, this information that's gonna be looked up we have to put it, because of the way it's coming in, we have to write it somewhere. And Redis is really the ideal place to put that, put all this information that we would uh, use for enrichment. So here we have dotted lines to, and, and basically uh, reflect that this is an optional step. It's disabled by default in the pipelines, in the pack, but you can enable it if you have access to Redis or an AWS ElastiCache or a similar from other cloud, cloud providers as well. At the route level, there's two pipelines here. There's one that is gonna populate Redis with the enrichment, and then another one where all those streaming events are basically gonna match. But within this pipeline, there is reference to chain functions in many cases here that'll basically filter for the different data sets. So in, in this case here, uh, network events, they're, they're a filter on network events versus DNS events. And then there's gonna be another pipeline that'll further process that data down just for those types of events. And in the case of the network pipeline or this enrich from Redis pipeline, those will actually be going out to Redis and reading this data that got populated from this AI master inventory data set uh, to use that for enrichment or in the case of network pipeline, use it for aggregation. Notice, here are the two routes. The one, first one that's disabled, that writes to uh, Redis, all of the inventory data. If you, if you have access to Redis or you have it set up, you can enable this. And uh, everything else basically, we're, we're saying here, if it's anything outside of this data directory in the S3 bucket, map it basically to this pipeline. And this pipeline is this CrowdStrike general. And once we go in there, this is where we can see now at the top, we're doing general processing of the events up to number four over here. 
And then next is where the magic happens, where we start matching on various events. And in this case here, the first section, we're dropping events. We're dropping unwanted events. And it's using a lookup. So in this lookup file here, event simple name drop.csv is where there's a list of all the event simple name types that we can drop. And so let's go ahead and just take a look at that here real quick. So to do that, we go to the knowledge tab. Anything that comes in with these event simple names will basically get dropped. And as you can see, most of them here in talking with other customers are really noise. They're overhead events mostly that nobody searches on. And you have your actual inventory data being written to Redis. You can enable this chain function here. And this basically will execute this inventory enrich from Redis. Here's where we've got various steps to basically look and see if data exists in Redis, bring it back if it does, and populate it, add it to the events. Uh, so this, these sets, uh, this one group here, Enrich from Redis, really has three options, and it calls out to enable only one of these three functions. Don't enable all three. Let's cover the DNS one, because this one is a, a, bit, a bit interesting here to get into. Um, so we expand this. Notice we're filtering on DNS requests. Let's drill down to this DNS pack. And while we're at it, let's load some DNS request events here as well. Looking at just the, the, the top four, so COM, Microsoft, MP, DSP. If this is a match in a top 100K um, list of URLs that, are, um, that people go to, a lot of times security analysts don't need that. And so, so we're doing basically a lookup against that file to see if the top level domain, if the second level domain, if the third level domain are all in there. Uh, if any of them in there, then let's flag this and at the end of the day, uh, basically drop those events. And the, here's the network pipeline. And let's load some network events here just so people see what they look like. That's exactly what we're doing with this native aggregation group over here. Where we're telling it, if, if the, the port here, basically aggregate on the port that is um, the, the more, more likely to be the application port, the, desti the destination application port. In this case, it's 53. So we've got these aggregation functions here that are doing this behind the scenes. And the result, if we go here now to the out tab, everything's crossed out because these are, we're doing aggregations here. So let's remove show dropped events. And what we have here is now this AID that had this IP address, because that's another field that's also captured, five times basically over the um, aggregation period that it connected to port 53. Right. And then same thing down here again. Um, it might be the same. It looks like it is the same set of IPs that are just being repeated. This one is 17 times. And that's just because it's a different time window, right? T different time window that it's being aggregated on. So just think of the reduction that you would have achieved here, but still have the visibility to know how many times somebody's been doing a DNS lookup, you know, but during this time frame. How many times have they been trying to talk to a potential? Um, ransomware actor or militia, malicious uh, destination. You can track that all still, just w w even with doing these aggregations. And in this case, a pretty massive 99% reduction. To have one aggregation, a stateful aggregation, as I like to call it, that's where the Redis option comes into play instead. And so if you disable this and notice here, Enable group A or B, not both, <laughs> right? Uh, enable A or B, not both. So you'll do aggregation via Redis instead of via native. And when you do that and click save, 
Now it's going to be using Redis instead to do the aggregations. All right, so uh, with that, let's just sum things up here. This diagram should be really helpful for anybody getting started with this pack because it draws out exactly what is happening and where, how it happens. And then further down in the file too, they didn't go cover this, but uh, the instructions, one of the first instructions is to download this event breaker rule set where once you download it, you can go to knowledge and uh, not within the pack, you have to go knowledge up at the top level here. And then you'll have event breaker rules. This is where you can add that event breaker rule. And then that's, that's you'll have to associate it to the S3 uh, input that is reading the logs from uh, the, the CrowdStrike provided S3 bucket.